Hey, what's up guys? Fabio here once again. I want to welcome you back to another edition of Martial Arts Movie Month and also another installment of American Ninja. And next I'm going to review American Ninja 3 Blood Hunt. This is the double feature DVD of American Ninja 2 and 3, which I believe is out of print now. But um, definitely, you know, American Ninja 3 is really good. Um, I really like that one as well because... Um, Steve James is pretty much the lead in it, um, and David Bradley is a really good martial artist. I really like him and this and some of the other movies that he's done. Um, I like the story, how, you know, they're using him as a guinea pig, really, and everything like that. You know, once again, great locations, uh, pretty good fight scenes in this one. Um, this one I really enjoyed, American Ninja 3, uh, Blood Hunt. So, uh, let's get started. But American Ninja 3 Blood Hunt uh, introduces the new character of Sean uh, Davidson. Is it Davidson, I believe? Um, I believe it's Davidson. Played by David Bradley, who is this uh, martial arts champion who's getting ready to compete at this tournament on this island. And there he meets uh, Curtis Jackson, once again played by the late, great Steve James who is, you know, since retired from the military and he's now a, you know, a martial artist, you know, martial artist and he's doing a demonstration at this uh, tournament. And we end up finding out that there is this um this general who um is in the you know, who has this guy, this scientist working for him who is creating this virus which you know will kill you know many people and you know every, and you know all that typical stuff um so what happens is they need an experiment you know they need a guinea pig to to make sure this virus works so there's this woman who is played by michelle chan who's a ninja master and she's a master of disguise and everything to go out and seek you know the the target who ends up becoming david bradley so, you know, through some uh, disguises and stuff, she, you know, lures him in and kidnaps him. And they end up, you know, injecting this, um, this uh, virus into him and infecting him. So, you know, th throughout the rest of the movie, they're trying to find out, you know, where the antidote is and how to get it. But in the end, you know, he overcomes it, you know, through the, the power of the ninja and saves the day. So that's basically the plot you know, for American Ninja 3, you know, something a little bit different this time around. Um, from what I have gathered, um, after American Ninja 2, Michael Dudikoff told his agent, he's like, look, I'm done, I don't want to do any more American Ninja movies, so tell him that. So that's basically what happened, um, from what I um, have heard from, you know, different places, so... You know, but I guess they got him to come back for part four. I guess they offered him more money or whatever the deal was. I'm not sure. But, you know, he didn't want to do American Ninja 3. And, you know, they had wanted to make another movie of American Ninja. So, you know, I guess Steve James was on board and they went out and found David Bradley. You know, I guess they did a big audition and he was the guy. But David Bradley, I, I've always liked in these movies. I like American Ninja 3 and 4 and 5. I like the ones that he's in. You know, he's a very good martial artist. Um, you know, I like some of the other movies that he's been in. I liked Blood Warriors. Uh, Cyborg Cop was okay. Um, I mean, he was good in it, but, you know, the movie was just okay overall. But he did one called Crisis, which was not a very good movie, but I thought he did a good performance. And he played a bad guy in one called Expect to Die, which was a pretty good movie. In my opinion. But David Bradley, um, now I'm not sure what he's doing. I think he may be a teacher now. Um, I'm friends with him on Facebook, but um, it's been a while since I've looked on his page. I'm not sure what he's up to now, but I believe he's a teacher now. And I heard that he had to stop doing the martial arts because there, I heard two things. I heard one, he hurt his back. And another thing I heard... He had some kind of heart condition. I'm not sure which of those is the truth or not. But, yeah, I heard that he had to stop studying martial arts or he couldn't do movies, something like that. But, you know, he's still around. He's still alive and well, which is great. Um, but I really liked his performance in this. You know, he's 
Um, basically, in the beginning of the movie, his dad gets killed by the the Cobra, who is the the general, the evil general, you know, um, which they are actually trying to steal money to fund their, you know, their experiment, so it all goes in hand. But, yeah, his dad gets killed, and, you know, his, his master, his dad's master, you know, raises him and everything to become the next ninja warrior and everything like that, which was cool. You know, I liked all that, which I'll get more into. But, you know, I really liked him. You know, he's a good martial artist. You know, he's, uh, he was already a, a martial artist, you know, before he did the movie, you know, unlike Michael Dudikoff. So, you know, he's doing the big kicks and the jumping kicks and the nunchucks. You know, he's doing the nunchucks, you know, when they're fighting in that little, like, shanty-looking part of town, you know. So, yeah, he's definitely a very good martial artist. You know, he can definitely do the action sequences. He's very capable of doing the action sequences, which is great. You know, Steve James, it pretty much, like I said, is the lead in here, you know. He's retired from the army now. He's just doing some martial arts demonstrations, which is great. You know, I really liked how they incorporated more martial arts into the character, which was awesome. And he's just, once again, having a lot of fun, you know, kicking ass. You know, he's got some funny one-liners, you know, when he, when he, you know, stabs that guy with the sword. And the guy's just like, oh, and he's just like, die! And the guy dies. It's awesome. You know, and he's dressed up as, like, the the limo driver and stuff, which is great. It's fun. He's got that t-shirt that says Shalom y'all, which is funny. But Steve James, you know, once again, I miss him a lot. I wish Steve James was still around. You know, I could, you know, he was supposed to be in Mortal Kombat and I could have easily seen him in the Expendables. You know, I miss Steve James a lot. You know, um, I wish that he was still here. He should still be here, you know, with us, but that's just the way it is, unfortunately. But, then they have this other guy in the movie, but his name isn't on the DVD, but he, you know, he's the one kid, you know, character, but he dies, unfortunately, but I liked him, you know, he was fun, you know, he would still get some good fight scenes and stuff too, but I liked him, and um, the guy who played uh, David Bradley's master is Calvin Jung, who was in RoboCop, he was the one one of the bad guys in RoboCop, he was in Lethal Weapon 4, he's been in a lot of movies. But yeah, you know, I really liked all the characters, uh, Michelle Chan, I forget her name in the movie, but she's like this ninja master, she trains all the ninjas, and you know, she's a master of disguise and everything, which was cool, um, you know, because she's like bad, and then she turns good, which was cool, I like that. Um, so yeah, and... You know, good cast in it, you know, um, this one's directed by uh, Cedric Sundstrom, who directed American Ninja 4, and I think that's all he's done, I'm not sure, but I'm pretty sure that's all he's done. But, um, this one came out in 1989, and at this point, Canon was really, you know, really, you know, in trouble financially, so the movie, I think it only had come out for like a week or two, and then they sold the rights to video and everything, so... But yeah, this movie was really when they were kind of starting to hit... I mean, they were hitting rock bottom at this point, you know. Um, and Chuck Norris didn't do a movie for them that year. Well, he was filming Delta Force 2, so he was still with Canon at the time. And Charles Bronson had finished up with Canon, uh, the last movie that he did. Uh, Kinjite came out in 89. <sighs> Excuse me, the same year that American Ninja 3 had come out. And at this time, they changed their name. They're now, at this point, they were Canon International. They were no longer the Canon Group or Canon Films. So they had changed their name. And a Menachem Golan had left at this time. So Yoram Globus was still running the company. You know, but, I mean, the movie, you know, they didn't have a huge, huge budget. But it shows. I mean, but, once again, they have a great tropical location, which looks great. You know, the fight scenes are pretty good. I really like the action sequences and stuff. So I can't complain. You know, the movie, you know, they took what little money they had, you know, like with the second film I was talking about, and they made a good product, and that's what counts. At the end of the day, that's what it's all about. You know, like I was saying more in part two, I don't understand why movies like these and the movies that you see behind me and the movies that you see over here you know, stuff like American Ninja and Chuck Norris and Arnold and I don't understand why and not even just action movies, all kinds of movies, you know. I don't understand why movies that were made the old-fashioned way, 
you know, not with 200, 300 million dollar budgets and actors getting paid, you know, 70, 80, 90 million per movie, you know, um, are, you know, I don't understand why these classic old school movies are getting picked on and getting shit on. But stuff like, you know, John Carter and you know, and the Dark Knight movies and, and all these newer movies that keep coming out. These movies get all these praise and they're making billions of dollars worldwide. But yet movies like these keep getting shit on. And I know a lot of you are thinking, and I know I said this in part two. Well, why do you keep bringing up The Dark Knight Rises? I thought you hated that movie. I do. It's a shitty movie. And I don't understand why it gets all this praise and everyone thinks it's the greatest movie ever made and all the fanboys get butt hurt when you say you don't like it because people can't understand that everybody's different and they have a different opinion. Everybody thinks that you have to feel the same way about something or you can go fuck yourself, you know, and that's bullshit, you know, whatever. I don't understand why people nowadays are conceited and... They think that no one else is is entitled to their own opinion, and they think that if you're if you don't agree, then you're wrong, and and you're wrong anyway. You know, I hate that shit. You know, call it nostalgia if you will, but I like these movies. You know, I like those movies over there, those movies in there, the movies in my mom's room. I like those movies. Call it nostalgia or whatever, but it's preference. But, you know, and, and what I say in this video is my opinion, you know, and I've said that in, in previous videos. I've been saying it the whole time I've been here on YouTube. It's my opinion, okay? That's what I think. That's not what you think or what everybody else thinks. But, once again, I know I'm kind of beating a dead horse here, but I don't understand why these old school movies get picked on. American, you know, all these film blogs and film websites, they put down movies like American Ninja and... And the Death Wish sequels are ones that I always see get picked on. Oh, those movies, they were made in the 80s. And people were stupid back then. And those movies suck. And the special effects are terrible. And the story's dumb. And they're way over the top. And they don't make any sense. They suck. No, that was the era. That was the 80s. The 80s was was Rambo and Arnold and, you know, the big guys, you know, big muscles, big guns, big explosions, you know, that's what that era was. And like I said, well, I know people are going to say, well, you're just being nostalgic. Fuck you and your nostalgia. No, not fuck me and my nostalgia. It's preference. Yeah, it is nostalgia in a way, but it's preference. Okay? It's my opinion. Don't be a dick, okay? We... I don't understand why people have to be a dick, dicks and assholes. I don't fucking understand it. I never will, but, you know, whatever. Um, anyway, that was just me banging. Um, but, you know, anyway. But, yeah, I don't understand why these movies and, you know, people make, make fun of Chuck Norris movies now. Oh, Invasion USA, you know, it, it predicted September 11th. It really did it, okay? It really did it. It was made in the 80s, you know, like Red Dawn. Oh my God, Red Dawn predicted what's going on in America now. Not really. It was a movie and it was made in a different time and it didn't predict anything, okay? Stop being a conspiracy theorist. You know, people put down like Chuck Norris movies and Red Dawn. Oh, that's old. That's old for old people and old school and old. No, it's preference. Look at me. I'm 20. I'm going to be 21 in a couple weeks. But I like this. These movies. I like older movies. Does that make me old? No. It's preference. So, shut up. But I'm getting off track now. But yeah, I mean, the movie... I really like this one. I know people don't like it as much as the first two. But I think the first three are great. You know, I really like this one. Do I like it as much as the first two? No, but it's pretty much right up there, you know, because I like David Bradley, Steve James is the lead, I like the locations, I like the fight scenes, which I'll get to in a second here, you know, I like the action sequences, um, but David Bradley, he studied a little bit of everything, he's karate, judo, jiu-jitsu, ninjutsu, he's done a little bit of everything, which is good, so, but, I mean, you know, I, I don't understand it, you know, why people don't like these movies. But that's just me. Because they're fun, they're creative, they're original. You know, American Ninja. 
how more original can it get? But, you know, but whatever, you know, but, you know, yeah, the first three are great in my opinion, you know, and I'll talk about four and five when I get there. But, you know, I don't know. But three is just as good as the first two in my opinion. If you only want to check out, you know, if, if, if someone were to ask me, hey, Fabio, I want to check out American Ninja. Which one should I watch and why? Well, I would say the first three. Why do you say the first three? Number one is a great 80s classic. It's a lot of fun. It's got good action in it, good soundtrack, everything. Number two, same deal, except I like number two a little bit more. That's just me. And number three, they changed the lead actor pretty much, but it's still a lot of fun. It's got good fights in it. Check it out. Okay, well, what about four and five? Well, four is, o four is okay. You know, I know... It's kind of a letdown a little bit, but I like the movie for what it is. You know, they tried, but I still enjoy the movie. Number five, I really like. I think it's better than four, but that's just me. I know a lot of people hate the movie, but I like it. So there you go. But anyway, you know, but the movie is full of great fight scenes, you know. Um, but I like the training sequence at the beginning where, you know, he's training to become a ninja master. I really like that. I thought it was cool how they did that. It was a really good way to open the movie. I liked when he's at the tournament and he's fighting the guy, you know, then there's that chase scene, you know, where, you know, he thinks it's his master, but it's not, and, you know, he's fighting the guys off, and he's, you know, jumping in the water and everything, you know, and then he goes back with Steve James and the other guy, I can't remember his name, I apologize, um, you know, and then they fight ninjas, and I love how Steve James is like, ninjas, I thought I left the ninjas with Joe in the army, you know, and you know, he's fighting, they're fighting all the ninjas, and David Bradley's on the roof doing the nunchucks and, you know, kicking guys off the roof and stuff. Good stuff, good fights, you know. Then, you know, they they get in that, you know, they find that little glider thing or whatever. It's a, it's a plane, I don't, it's a little personal, I don't know what they call it, but glider plane thing, you know, I call it that. But, you know, they get him in there, and he goes to the compound, you know, where they trace the girl and he sees the ninjas training which was cool i like that um you know then he gets captured you know he fights some ninjas and he gets captured then they find him on the boat you know they're fighting on the boat and everything and steve james has got like an ak and he's shooting people which is awesome you know and they get him out of there and um you know then at the end of the movie they go back in because he's trying to find the antidote and Steve James has got, you know, those, he's, first of all, he's got a Desert Eagle, and he's just, you know, just shooting people, and then he pulls out the sword, and then it's two swords, and he's just fucking all these ninjas up, you know, and like I said, he, he stabs that guy, and he's like, oh, and he's like, die, and the guy dies, which is great, you know, and David Bradley's dying, but, you know, he, you know, the nine levels of power, you know, I, I can do some of them, I can't do all of them, but, you know, he overcomes it. And then those guys, like the whole movie, every time they show that lab, those guys are just standing there. And you can clearly see the guys moving back and forth. But they turn into ninjas, you know, then he fights the ninjas and he kills the evil scientist, you know, that killed his dad, you know, and, you know, and then the, I love the last line of the movie. You know, let me tell you something, Sean. You know how long I've been dealing with ninjas? Can we go fight, like, bank robbers or thieves or something else for a change? I know that's not the exact line, but... You get the gist of it, you know. But yeah, I love how they ended that movie on the joke. But yeah, David Bradley and Steve James had good chemistry. And I don't know why Steve James didn't do part four. I guess because he was sick with cancer. I, I, I can assume that's the only reason why he didn't do the movie. You know, I couldn't, I can't see him. You know, I know, and I know he did a couple more movies. Um, Weekend at Bernie's 2, he was in and Blood Fist 5, but Blood Fist 5, you can really tell he was sick because he didn't, doesn't really look like himself. But um, I, I, I guess that's the only, re the only reason why he did not do the movie. But anyway. But yeah, they had good chemistry. I really liked the stuff between them. They were good. There was good one-liners. There was fun. You know, that's, what, that's why I liked the first three, you know, the most. So, yeah. So, but American Ninja 3 Blood Hunt is a lot of fun. It's got good action in it, good fights, you know, the cast is good, David Bradley is good. So, yeah, it's a good movie. Is it as good as the first two? I mean, I, it is. I think it is as good as the first two, but, you know, for me, 
you know, it's part two, you know, two is my favorite, then one, then three. But they're all right up there. I mean, the first three are really the best ones. And I like five, I mean, that's just me. But, you know, but the first three are definitely the best. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this review of American Ninja 3 Blood Hunt. You know, very fun sequel. And stay tuned because tomorrow I will upload American Ninja 4, The Annihilation, and American Ninja 5. So thanks for watching and take care. Peace.